command. Correction. I have two new calls for you now. It's confirmed. Confirmed. Zero seven three zero nine. At one nine seven nine eight South Pearl Road. Zero seven three zero nine. Sir, sir, uh, welcome. So this is an exercise basically in communication and coordination. So we're learning about um, how the fire districts are, are coordinating on this. We're learning about how the federal resources are coming into play. Command, would you please talk to uh, the chief and see if they're updating the live units on our dispatch channel on uh, C3? So basically we start with an individual who is uh, stranded. 2282. 2282, go ahead. Per command, respond to 17455, 70,455 roller coaster. How does that information get back to the OEM or the EOC, the Emergency Operations Center? How does that information get out to the first responders? And then once that person is captured or rescued, where does that person go? Well, they go to the shelter. So how do we communicate with the shelter? What do they need? So that whole communication process is happening internally. And then we add the National Guard into it. So now there's a whole separate communication process that has to happen. Guard, this is control, go ahead. Yeah, um, we have contact with uh, the senior folks from security forces. They have not even flown yet. Uh, they're going to give us a call direct when they get on on uh, on the ground at the ramp, and then these guys will go pick them up. Uh, do we have the right people in the right spot? This just came in. A delivery location. Uh, I'll post those here up in the next minute, okay? Um, is there proper leadership within the EOC? Is it working appropriately? What are some things we can do to make it easier? What can we put in place? What type of policies? Maybe even what type of equipment we need to make it a better, better run. So the bottom line is we're testing a little bit of everything and I think the outcome is how did it go? What were the hiccups? What were the things we could do better? Uh, what were the things that we completely failed at? What were things that we were completely successful with? And just build on that. Every time we do something like this, there's something new to be learned. Guard, this is Control, come in. Control, Guard. Guard, I have information on Inc. 07 and Inc. 08. You gave them to Louise, pull nine. Nine needs to go to the EOC, not, not the Guard. Communications process with the other agencies involved has been very good. Obviously, there's always little kinks to work out and little things to smooth over. But in general, uh, we're pretty happy with the communication flow going back and forth with everybody. You know, our goal is to provide the best safety or safe environment that we can for our community. And this is one way of doing that. Madam Chair, uh, members of the Board of Commissioners, I'd like to bring our staff down and introduce them. And uh, I'll start with uh, Lonnie Enzer, who is the Deputy Chief of OEM. And you got to see Jim Reed, who couldn't be here this morning. But I did want to mention, he did look fabulous in that white shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you guys had a lot of fun with that. Good morning, Commissioners. Thank you for having us here this morning. Introduce him. Okay, go ahead. You go ahead. Okay. Okay, I'll introduce him. First is Bart Evans, who was with us. He came from the Sheriff's Office and Bart was in charge of the EOC. Lonnie was the director of the exercise. Next to Bart is Ted Sayre. He does our ambulance contract with the ESA and manages that and was working in the EOC. And then the person next to Ted, the key cog in the entire operation is our EOC, or our, actually our OEM coordinator, who is Carolyn Sasaki. And she makes sure that we have everything we need and about every other day shows me how to fix my phone so I can call people and receive emails and all that type of stuff. And then the handsome gentleman against the wall there is John Cole. He's one of our hazmat uh, coordinator trainers and responds with our hazmat truck. His partner, who is at the fire academy, is Rich Haverlow. And uh, just an example of, uh, Jim talked about having the right people in the right place. Uh, Mr. Haverlow volunteered to go to a two-week chemistry course at the fire academy. So his wife actually works out at PSD. She had previously worked in OEM, which gives us some of our depth of experience, but you're she said he's the, not having you're much... You're doing the acronym thing, RC. Oh, PSD. Oh, I'm OEM. sorry, out of public Remember, services. Remember, not everybody is listening. And I catch other people on that. I did that during mean. the exercise. Thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> so she works out of public services. I had a chance to see her this morning before I came down, and she said, Richard is not having much fun. 
And I've talked to people that have gone through that chemistry class and it's really challenging. So anyway, the things that you got to see were because of these people here. Two people that are not here, Robin Adair, who does our outreach, and during the exercise managed the volunteer checkpoint, deployed the volunteers for where they were supposed to go to be rescued, was not able to be here, and then the gentleman you saw on the radio in the black shirt, uh, Dr. White, who helped plan the exercise. Here. Oh. <laughs> now who would think that a PhD wouldn't be able to tell time? <laughs> you know? The only PhD on our staff, but I appreciate that because I'm generally the one that's late. So thank you, Dr. White. So with that, and you kind of saw an overview of the video and the amount of work that went in from November? From October. From October to turn this around, to coordinate it with a statewide National Guard effort was just tremendous because we thought we'd need a lot more planning time. And actually Dr. White brought us the opportunity and said, we can do this with the people we've got and we were able to do it. Is there anybody on staff that would like to comment or add anything? But I guess what I would like to start with is thanking all them for their work, all their planning work, all the work on that Saturday to make things happen, the work they do for this community to help keep it secure. But the last thing I'd like to do is to thank you, the commissioners, because it doesn't happen without your vision and we're getting some kind of emergency, but Lonnie will take care of it. So <laughs> without you, the commissioners, yeah, he, he always does. So <laughs> without you, the commissioners, several parts of it, it's your vision, it's your resource allotment. We have to have budget. We have to have capacity. We have to have people to put on things like that, to do things like that. And then the other thing is your support and participation. I want to thank the several of you that were up there that day, and the, the valuable part about that was, and the way we're structured, you got to see how the ELC works. The commissioners were located in the policy group room. Next to it, which is normally our Joint Information Center, was where we were doing the injects and where Dr. White was actually running the exercise from. We reported to him that day. But everybody got to see you there and got to make that a positive because they got to learn from your previous experiences. The other thing is that the, we work with a vast number of volunteers from different agencies. In that exercise, there were 30 different agencies. And I'll be blunt with you, a lot of times when we go places and we say we engage our commissioners to do this or do that, the first thing they do is go, oh no, you can't, you can't have an elected official there. And we have a completely 180 degree view of that. We engage the commissioners, we have things for them to do, and we want them to be aware as the incident's unfolding all the way. And for those of you that participated, we appreciate it, and you reinforced our confidence in you, that, that we're on the right track, we're doing the right thing, and that, that you do have experience to bring to the table without interfering in an operational sense because that's the responders' concern, that elected officials, because even if they make a suggestion, at that point, if it's an elected official, that becomes a priority. But nobody did that. You know, they let everybody here fulfill their role and let us fulfill our role as professional responders. And um, <clears throat> I know Commissioner Clark went with their, our group and there, there was the director of the utilities, um, emergency management there, which is a huge deal on a severe weather event that we keep utilities on, and Steve Kerr was there. But for the ones that went out to the command post, which was at the Black Forest Fire Station, they got to see the differentiation between what the command post does and what the EOC does. And Chief Jack, who was in charge of it, and we worked with him for years in this area, and he's a good man, and, and I mean, he explained it more succinctly than I've heard, more succinctly than I can explain anything, obviously, but, he said, you know, we have problems. We call the LC, they send us what we need, and we go out and solve problems. He goes, now we may request stuff, and a lot of RC will go, that's gonna take us like three days to get, and it's gonna cost like $2 million. Okay, well, new plan. Maybe we should request something else. So, you know, we, we're there to help people. We're there to support the responders, and you were there to support us and help us, and I appreciate all the time you put in and, and all the support that we receive from you. So with that, I will cut myself off and answer any questions if anybody has any specifics they'd like to know. Thanks so much. Um, RC, you mentioned 
um, you know, resource allotment to do this. So um, this exercise was conducted with many different partners. I know we did National Guard and some other entities as well. So how was this funded currently? Was this an EMPG grant that we utilized to fund this exercise? or? Uh, this exercise, we, we started with the uh, plans with uh, Colorado National Guard. I'm sorry. We started with the plans with the Colorado National Guard back in September. Okay. And we didn't have much of a budget for this. Mm -hmm. So we did this with staff hours, with volunteers, and we replaced the uh, goods and services that the Salvation Army provided in feeding the uh, participants. That was our budget. That's we right. did this very efficiently and effectively. I encourage us to continue to apply for the EMPG grants because it does allow us the opportunity to have more of these kind of exercises, which you guys um, obviously you know, showed that it was very beneficial to have this and um, the lessons you learned from it, the successes that were there, and so to move forward with that funding that's available to us. So great job, guys. I appreciate it. It was Thank fun you. to see it in the morning. I'm sorry I couldn't stay for the whole day. Another thing I'd say is when we're the designer of the exercise, a lot of times cost comes with that because we're asking other people to come to the table. And depending on who those people are, we have to pay for their time. You know, if we have law enforcement people, uh, we engage city fire departments or paid fire departments, we have to pay them. This was a little bit different in that we tagged in on something the guard was doing. <clears throat> a quick story, and the people that were out at the command post got to see it. This was a statewide guard exercise. And they had a group of uh, young troops that started the day in Greeley, went to Buckley, and then deployed down here in a helicopter based on an eject, I'm sure, uh, devised by Dr. Nefarious over there that there was a unruly person at the Black Forest Fire Station, and there was no law enforcement that could help them. You know, people making demands, and they don't, firefighters aren't security people. So they deployed six people with M16s and, and a helicopter from Buckley down there to solve that problem. And when you're walking in and you see that, that's a fairly intimidating appearance, especially to people who aren't security people. But my point of that is, I mean, we received resources from all over the state. And what was a little bit different about this one is we dovetailed in with what somebody else was doing, which like Lonnie said, helped us control those costs. Because when we start designing them, as all of you know, and we start calling people to the table, that gets expensive really fast. I want to say I mean, it was a little intimidating to show up to the Black Forest Fire Department and have and have um, National Guard lining the walkway with their assault rifles in hand. Um, we we hear there were no bullets in them, so that made me feel a little better. But I didn't know that at the beginning. <laughs> so, um, but but they had used that as an opportunity for an exercise. Someone had had sort of texted um, uh, someone else a, a picture of someone in a Humvee who had been rescued by a Humvee. So I think National Guard, the Colorado National Guard was really excited to be able to participate in this and have an opportunity. I think they were doing some other events around the state. There were other counties that were actually doing similar exercises. Weld, I know, was one of them. I can't remember if it was Larimer or which other counties. But um, it, it was sort of a joint effort for them to be able to practice their mobilization. And um, our C will recall at Black Forest Fire, we were able to connect with some folks from uh, the Army who are stationed here that work uh, with satellite imagery um, and have, you know, sometimes those relationships that you don't even know um, exist in your area. They're located here, and we've never used them before, but they can do all kinds of assistance in mapping and be able to get real-time satellite imagery uh, for things like fires or floods or those kinds of incidents, and we, they can help with our planning, and they're right here in our own community um, as, as part of the Army Space Group. I can't remember their exact... Um, Space Group. The space group something for the army. Right, right, but we have their contact. And, and so sometimes, I think it's that relationship building and knowing people ahead of time. Uh, over 400 volunteers and as you said, 30 agencies. And um, it was really a great experience to be able to watch it. And I will say to the commissioners, um, this is the first time, I've been a commissioner now for 11 years. This is the first time I have ever been invited to participate or even to observe an emergency exercise. Um, and this is something that needs to continue. 
I think that the way OEM was operated previously, it was very insulated from the Board of County Commissioners, and after all, we're the ones that fund it. And so I think it's really important for the future that the policymakers understand their roles and are, are participating in some way to get out of the way, stay out of the way, but understand what's going on and what our dollars and those tax dollars do pay for. This is the first major exercise we've had. Some of this group we just hired in October, you know, like Dr. White, kind of our resident free agent, we let, you know, we looked at what a great response group that is, and we're like, we need more brains. So we hire a PhD, and he brings the smarts to the group. Obviously, John brings the size to the group, so we are smart and we can move heavy things. But my point is, just what Commissioner Clark said, not a, this whole team just came together in October and this was our first major exercise. So any accolades that we may get or the county may get, I think we had a lot of press, uh, positive press coverage. We had a lot of our PIO staff there recording what we were doing. Take pride in that because that's your effort at work. That's your vision, it's your resource allocation that you can go other places and brag about what we do. And we had that opportunity in December when we had counties from all over. And I don't know if any of you were up to Broadmoor the day we had our hazmat trucks. There were people from all over the country that didn't understand that we had hazmat response capabilities and how did we discharge those responsibilities? And how did we staff and how did we get grant money for equipment and things like that? My point being, we're doing a lot of things right. So that doesn't mean we do everything right. And when you see us not doing something right, please call us on it. But when people identify that we do something right, that credit goes directly back to you and to Mr. Yankowski. Appreciate that very much. But uh, it is this crew, you guys have done, a, and gals, have done an extraordinary job. Um, it's too bad you don't have any fun together because you really just, it, you can tell there's no camaraderie here at all. Um, but really when we look back over the years and the way um, and there was a decision made many 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 years ago um, statutorily offices of emergency management typically reside under county administration which is under the board of county commissioners in counties in colorado there was a decision made many years ago to shift that to the sheriff's office and many things worked well and we obviously saw uh, a number of disasters and went through those disasters and went through them very well um, but we did learn from those and we discovered things um, and we recognized uh, the significance of the partnerships that we had, especially as it relates to the recovery process, which begins the moment the disaster begins, as we all know, um, and seeing and learning how that process works. We knew that, that in order to make it seamless, it made sense to bring it back under administration. Uh, where it is typically housed statutorily and make the changes necessary to make sure that there's, there's just never an interruption. And we're very excited to see that in a drill like this, um, we saw really good fruit come from all of that work. Um, we've learned a lot about disaster uh, response and recovery. Um, and I mentioned this when, when I was there, uh, from a policymaker perspective, um, understanding roles is critical. It's critical from our perspective. It's critical for everyone um, um, so that the, everything clicks off the way it's supposed to click off. And, and that's, uh, you know, it's really when you come back from training um, out of the National Emergency Training Center, um, in my perspective, the number one lesson for a policymaker is to learn your role and understand how you play that and how you disseminate information and, and make sure resources are flowing. So it was great to see that. I think I learned from that. When I saw the whole drill, frankly, it's pretty eerie because it looks it looked a lot like what it looked like in recent years. And we've all been through that. And we've all been in the EOCs. We've all been in the command centers during real disasters. And it was great to see the professionalism that you all put into this drill with all of the partners. Um, on the, the grant subject that came up, uh, the EMPGs specifically, sometimes those cost more than they're worth. Um, and I want you to all keep an eye on that. If it's costing more to administer such things than they're actually bringing into the community, then they're not worth it. And if, they're, if they are worth it, then we'll go for it. But we want to be careful that they're not um, costing us more um, in, in all the administration. And that unfortunately becomes the case with some of those grants. So um, just want to say thank you for a tremendous um, uh, drill. 
Uh, we'll see if we get a 24-inch snowstorm or an 18-inch snowstorm or anything like that coming in our near future. Who knows? Uh, but uh, I feel very good about your preparation and, and uh, where we stand with all of our partners. So I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Commissioners, thank you for all your support for this office and full credit for the success of this exercise goes to the staff right there. It does. So it's certainly one of the things that we know that our, um, our department, you know, continues to push uh, our Office of Emergency Management um, as well as our commissioners is personal preparedness. Um, because while you guys are on your way um, to rescue someone from a car from snow or a flood or a fire, um, if people have things and equipment with them, they're going to be more well prepared to survive in that um, as they go forward. And I know we've got some folks here to talk about wildland fire here today, too. Um, so it's really critical that we continue to pound that message and have that drumbeat. So. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Clark. Um, one of the things that during the, during the exercise um, we were trying to get across, and I know thanks to um, Jim Reed and, and our staff, is individual preparedness. And I know the commissioners have been very, um, very vocal about making sure that we're prepared. And our public information officer office has also been pushing the fact of emergency preparedness. So if you go to our website at www.elpasoco.com, elpasoco.com, um, if you click on the emergency preparedness link, it takes you to the page that has the access to the FEMA and emergency preparedness kits. Um, as we hit the winter, winter time, uh, making sure you're prepared ahead of time and don't get stuck in your car so that other folks have to risk their lives trying to rescue you is extremely important. So just as a reminder, and then I'm informed that the it, that unit is the U.S. Army Space and Missile Defense Command that we were able to establish some relationships with ahead of time. So again, it's about that relationship building. But um, no time like the present to be prepared for winter and make sure that when you get in your car, you have things in your car and the, the preparedness kit ahead of time. So thanks guys for all of, and ladies, for uh, the work that you did. We had really good coordination and all heard from everywhere from the fire department in Black Forest to across this, the um, spectrum was appreciation for allowing us to work together on this. Any other comments from the board? Okay, thanks for the report. Thank you. I appreciate Thank it you. very much.